it runs so cool. So cool. Yeah, I've been on a bit of a gaming kick lately from the Steam Deck to some really great gaming phones showing up. And on those phones, a few accessories can really take that up a notch. The folks at GameSurp sent along their new X3 controller for me to take for a spin and share my thoughts. This controller concept is certainly familiar from the front. We've got extendable arms that slide controls. You mount your phone in between for a Nintendo Switch style setup. This one specifically is built for Android phones. There's a really flexible USB-C to attach. And and as long as the phone has decent OTG support, it should work well with the X3. Directly listing support for Samsung, Huawei, Xiaomi, and Google. But I played with a few other brands too, including, you know, my Red Magic 7 Pro gaming phone. Mostly good experiences. Occasionally you run into some funkiness with OTG support on phones like the OnePlus 10 Pro. I've been a big fan of mobile gaming for a while now. You've got this supercomputer in your pocket. You should be able to do more with it. Obviously, one of the sticky points of of mobile gaming has been controller support where not all phones and not all games can support all controllers. But given that reality and a number of the games that I prefer to play on mobile, the game server has been kicking just fine. Now, when it comes to this concept in general, where you've got controllers that kind of bookend your phone, I've had a few concerns. And one small concern shared specifically with the X3, you just wanna be careful how you insert the phone. This is a great consideration that the USB-C plug can angle out, but you just wanna be careful not to put any extra pressure on your phone's charge port. As a controller, this has been a popular concept, but where the X3 gets a bit more exciting is this pad in the middle, which is connected to a fan on the back. Inside this housing is a Peltier cooler. It's similar to those nicer standalone phone coolers you can find on Amazon and popularized by gaming phone manufacturers. I won't go into the full technical breakdown, but it's more than just a fan clipped to the back. There's a module inside here which does some really impressive temperature regulation. GameSir claims over a 20 degree Celsius drop in surface temperature on this pad, and those claims are spot on. After a very short run, it's noticeably colder to the touch. With my room temperature being around 75 degrees Fahrenheit, the GameSir started at 82 degrees and dropped fast to 43 degrees Fahrenheit. The fan is audible, but it's not loud enough to bother you if you're also turning up the phone speakers just a little bit. Now, what's kind of cool about this concept, and both literally and figuratively, is because of the way that these arms extend, you do have a little wiggle room to slide the fan around to try and get it lined up a bit closer to where heat is being generated in the phone. Obviously, you're never gonna get that perfect because of all of the different camera modules on our phones and where the CPU and the GPU might be located, where the SOC is physically inside the phone, but you can often get it pretty close to where the back of the phone might be heating up. And as a controller, it's got a nice chunky grip that I like. Now, I usually prefer symmetrical analog sticks, but it didn't take too long to get used to this sort of offset orientation here. And this arrives with all the good stuff, configurable buttons, an alternate D-pad, and caps for the analog sticks. The arms on the X3 hold in most phones well with just a minimum of flex, but on a real chunky bugger like my Red Magic, the phone can start to kind of edge out. We get these little rubber grips that are supposed to hold it in place. Anything skinnier than a phone with a built-in active cooling fan should be held in just fine. That slight flex can help though, where the side grips and the back plate handle phones like my Pixel 6 Pro very well. You know, the camera bar on the Pixel 6 can be an issue for some similarly designed controllers, no issues here. So we put it all together and it's a winning combination. The buttons and switches are great. We've got Kale, clicky action on the triggers, and this does help maintain higher frame rates especially on newer phones with thirstier SOCs. We get incredible compute power on tap these days, but minutes of gameplay can run a phone hot enough to tank frame rates. This is putting a big old cold spot on the back of the phone and helping to get some of the heat out of the rear. It won't completely chill the whole device, obviously, where even your screen is necessary these days for helping to get some of the heat out. But I think it's critical to really put mobile gaming into the proper perspective. Running some demanding, some really challenging games 
I've got phones that can not only keep up with, but they can start to outpace my Steam Deck on arcadey titles, Dead Cells at over 90 frames per second, Tesla vs. Lovecraft, Undead Horde, over 100 frames per second. And with just a little bit of extra cooling help, we're running those games at incredibly high frame rates without the whole phone being nuclear hot to the touch. We're maintaining a much higher level of performance for longer periods of time. And finishing the test, the back of the phone was cooler than the ambient temperature in my room. If you're into mobile gaming at all, I'm not blowing your minds here. The cooler works. I mentioned earlier just a couple small concerns about the design and layout. Obviously, you just want to be a little careful about how you insert the phone because of pressure on the USB-C port. The other small concern to keep into consideration is this is a two cable solution. One power cable is going to be used solely for the fan and cooler. You'll need a second cable to charge the phone if you want to power while you game. And the pass-through is not a full USB OTG connection. So plugging in other accessories isn't going to work, which is the last minor bummer. These kinds of controllers block all of your ports. So no headphones while you're playing unless you go Bluetooth. It's kind of the thing with all accessories, and especially when we're looking at mobile gaming, we're making a choice and we're balancing some small compromises. So if you're looking to drive a phone harder for gameplay and you want better control over the games that you play, that's where the X3 totally delivers. It plays the games real good and it keeps things cool. Now, at the time this video was shot, we are currently in pre-order on the GameStar website. We're looking at $99.99, which feels correct. It feels spot on for a good controller and a good cooler in one portable shell. Plus, uh, that price includes a pretty nice carry hard case. It's just a, a nice little perk, nice little add-on for the cost. So I will, of course, leave some links down below where you can find more information on the GameSir X3. Shop one of these bad boys online as they're getting out of an Indiegogo campaign and they're currently in pre-order. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos and subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has been phenomenal. Those of you who are clicking on the links in the description, maybe you're shopping a little merch, checking out my home site, somegadgetguy.com, or maybe you've joined the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch, so much on the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next review.